Tinder wasn't <laughs> around when I was single, so I wanted the experience of being ghosted like I would if I was single. <laughs> yeah. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors Podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. Dan, would you prefer to put in loads of effort to improve profit on your business a little bit, or put in a little bit of effort that improves the profit of your business a lot? Uh, the second one? Yeah. Most oh. people don't need that long to consider it because it's simple. Yeah. But obviously, your brain isn't as powerful as most people. No. But um, no, the second one, low effort, big return. Yeah. That was basically the essence, yeah. right? That's what we all want. Yeah. And we've had multiple times in our business journey, I think, and I guess you might have some examples of this as well, where we've done something relatively simple, like tweaked something simple. Mm. And then it's been like a light bulb moment of why the hell didn't we do this months ago or years yeah. ago? And one small change like unlocks this huge opportunity or increases profit or just mm. makes the business a nicer place to work in. Um, and yeah, I, I, I guess I want to talk about those some examples of those small things that have had massive a massive impact. And we've got quite a lot for our clients as well that we've learned from as well. Yeah. And I think um, putting our sh ourselves in the shoes of the anchors, I think this is going to be an interesting episode because there's going to be lots of actionable things that could genuinely have huge impact on their business. So yeah. um, you're in for a treat, anchors. Yeah. The earliest one, the, the, the example that made me think of this, and this is more like early days of the business, but was when you used, well, naturally we both were involved in sales, uh, for our business and we used to basically put like an action plan together <laughs> we used to call it basically a proposal you used, i think it was a long word document that was probably terrible back in the day i was gonna say right it wasn't the traditional proposal what we used to do and this was terrible don't don't do this was spend days and days basically coming up with all the answers and everything they could ever imagine this huge document that wasn't like a, here's what we can do for you and here's what you need to pay us. It was, here's all the answers and here's everything you need in a step-by-step -step guide. Just did all the work. Did all the work. Presented <laughs> it terribly. And, and then sent it to them via email. Yeah. And then no one responded. And no wonder why, because one, they'd already got all the answers they wanted. They didn't need to pay us because we'd written them a whole yeah. plan. And two, it was just emailed to them. There was no like personal connection we, there. Yeah, from that, we used to just get ghosted. Tinder wasn't <laughs> around when I was single, so I wanted the experience of being ghosted like I would if I was single. <laughs> yeah. So we just emailed those action plans. Yeah. We called them that because uh, I don't know why we did that. No, I'll tell you why we did that. Why? This is another bit of wisdom from dad. Uh, he said, no, never, call it a, never call it a proposal because you don't want to propose something to them you want an action plan that you're going to work with them to implement yeah that worked well didn't it <laughs> yeah it did um, it didn't work anyway well. so the, the the reason i thought of this we made one small change back in the day early days and it just changed everything overnight so the one small thing was we just literally used to book in a meeting while we were with the people initially to present this uh, action mm. plan or proposal to them and at the time, it was just like, oh, okay, well, that sounds like it'd be take, take a bit more time. That's not that good, but we'll try it. And immediately, our conversions for new business yeah. went up massively. Yeah. And that was a massive step up for the business from one small change. So we've got some more kind of advanced versions. And that's some examples we're going to talk through. But that was, that was the first one that came to mind for our business. Yeah. And we've had so many of those where you do something relatively simple and just think, oh, my God, that's made a massive difference. Why didn't we do that sooner? Yeah. 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 There's probably going to be things now that we're doing that we're like, yeah. in a year's time, why on earth did we oh, do that? Definitely. Yeah. Mm. Wasting huge amounts. Of, oh, I worked <laughs> till 10 p.m. last night, probably because I'm wasting Yeah, so time. just to give the Angus context, because I think we need to address this, Lloyd. Before the episode, I was laughing because I was looking at Lloyd and I said to him, deer in headlights comes to mind because Lloyd basically doesn't know where he is right now. He worked, He's working so much. Bless him. He's doing really well, aren't you? Bless him. And you worked till 10 p.m. last night. You've just come off the back of an interview because we're hiring at the moment. And Lloyd looks like he's got a hangover and that he's a mess, but he basically Thank hasn't you. been drinking or anything. Thank you. <laughs> and he's just no, but but we've got lots of lots. I don't of, know where I am. <laughs> we've got lots of good bits to share in this episode, um, but just bear with Lloyd because I feel like I'm going to hold this you, together have for you guys. Seen those videos where 
like people get people sleeping and they kind of move them into a <laughs> really weird situation and they wake up. And oh yeah, like, <gasps> put them in a river on like yeah. a floating. Like I've seen, I've seen one recently where there's a guy in a pub asleep yeah. and then they put a hand of cards in his hand, move a table and they start a poker game <laughs> and then they kind of tap him and he wakes up and it's his go and he just starts <laughs> playing poker. And that's what I feel like right now. I've just been woken up and it's like, oh, cool, I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> All right. But no, nah, it's going to be really good. I'm a yeah. And we've done lots of prep for this. There's, you know, lots yeah. of prep. So, yeah. Do you want to hear the first, uh, what are we calling this? <laughs> uh, where are we? <laughs> what are we doing? We're on a podcast, we? Lloyd. We're, we're calling. Profit multipliers. Yeah. Simple strategies for exponential business growth. Yeah. Yeah. See, that sounds good. Yeah. So I want to hear one of those. What are we calling these? <laughs> isn't as good. So I want to so, hear one of those profit multipliers, right. Lloyd. Let's I'll give you one of those. Yeah. Just woken up. <laughs> Unlock new audiences. So um, this sounds very simple. But I'll explain why it's, it's been a game changer for some of our clients previously and could be a small tweak you can take. So um, I think this will be helpful for businesses currently or people currently that are profitable and kind of wanting to scale and uh, potentially businesses with like a certain level of success but maybe frustrated with slow progress or slow growth at the moment um so i think we all as business owners or leaders or or whatever your role may be get in a rut sometimes of like oh this is how we do things so at my business we use instagram to promote our business we get leads through instagram or we get sales through instagram or paid instagram and then people buy our products that's what we do and so you get into this thing where it's like right we need to create better content for instagram to improve results we need to um spend more on instagram paid ads and optimize we'll instagram basically because that's where you've yeah. got your yes yeah, like business that, from before this is how my business works so those are the things i need to do and obviously at times you can kind of get those plateaus in results you can get to a point where you kind of think i don't feel like i can do much more here so um that can be very frustrating i think something that has been really good for us to consider and we've i'll go to some examples from our clients in a minute is like thinking completely outside of what you currently do and we we've called it previously like a 10 percent test and i think we've mentioned previously on this podcast that like our podcast at one point was that test so we have ways that um we get new customers and then we're like, let's try a podcast. And that was mm. our test. And then this podcast has generated lots of income and business for, for Knowlton, which has been great. And I want to encourage you anchors to start these 10% tests. So unlock a new audience by, this could be by testing a completely new platform. Um, this could be by, so my brain stopped working because I haven't slept. Trying something completely new. Yes. So like, like, let me give you an example of how um, I was thinking of literally a story about us of how this relates to us. Mm. So we were literally this uh, doing exactly what Lloyd's talking about. When we started, we were stuck in a rut, stuck in a rut of just stuck getting in a rut. stuck in a rut of just getting business through one channel, which was kind of like small local networking events where small businesses, local hotels, local restaurants would go and meet. And you'd basically hand out leads and things. That was our whole world at that point. That was our that whole was world. That's the only way you could get new customers. And like Lloyd said, at the time, we were like, my thoughts were definitely, how can we get better at, at going to small networking events and get more business from small networking events? And we were stuck in that. It's almost like a, a kind of mindset thing, not being like fluffy here, but like you need to think bigger with what you're doing. Like Lloyd said with these 10% tests, don't just get stuck in what you're doing. And we eventually thought, let's try something different. Let's go to like bigger events in London and meet people. Mm. And that, that helped us. Let's uh, create video content and post it on social platforms. Let's try that. And all these things along the way, you're trying and testing new different things to, to try and reach that new audience like, like you're yeah, talking about. It's unlocking that new audience and that new potential. And this could literally double your business yeah. overnight. And so we've, we worked with a client um, and they were basically smashing it on ppc google pay per click they were getting loads of new customers turning over millions selling loads and loads of products mm. really successful and then we ran their first campaign on social and shot content for social media and originally facebook and instagram so that was 
you know, I'd see that as their 10% test. That year, I think when we first did it, it was 2021. Their business is very successful anyway, but it was almost like overnight, our campaign went live and suddenly each month they were getting hundreds of thousands of pounds of sales more than they previously Literally did. Literally hundreds of thousands of pounds. From this completely new audience mm. on Facebook and Instagram that they weren't uh, they weren't targeting before. Um, so this was a new test, unlocked that audience and suddenly that business is changed forever. Yeah. And, you know, for your business, if you're a marketing manager or if you're a business owner, you could be thinking like, we don't run any stuff on social. So that could be the thing for you. Mm. You're having success elsewhere. Start running ads on social. Let's do that as a test. Or it could be that, like I said, the example before of running ads on Instagram. Mm. And now it could be the time to go, right, we actually need to look at like search engine optimization. <laughs> search engine <laughs> optimization. <laughs> or pay-per-click advertising mm. on Google. That can be a test. And don't get me wrong, it's likely that sometimes maybe like two out of three of these tests you'll you'll end up going actually mm. no we don't get a great return let's not do that but the potential to completely unlock a new audience and potential for your business is massive from quite a small tweak potentially i think the big question in anchor's minds right now because I, I think it's quite easy to get this this it, like in summary try new stuff <laughs> like that that's that's it on a basic level yeah, try i should have said that no 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 but try new marketing channels to reach your audience and generate business right that's the simple thing we're saying here however it's like the big question i'd have is what should we try like because there's so many different channels out there you know i'm thinking like why did we try a podcast why did we try linkedin why did we um and i think that there's there's three key things that you want to think about when choosing what to try one is where are the people that you're trying to become customers spending more time mm. uh this is a simple one like this is why you know a lot of companies are testing places like tiktok because tiktok came about and loads of people are constantly doom scrolling spending loads of time on tiktok so that's something to test but think about like who are your customers where are they spending time secondly uh what skills do you have so for example you know, if Lloyd and I were terrible at, at communicating and speaking to each other, we probably wouldn't start a podcast. If we were nervous in front of the camera recording, we'd probably start a podcast. So think about your skills and... It's about the resources within your business. Exactly. What resources do you have? What skills do you have? And thirdly, I think there's definitely an element of like, what would you enjoy doing? Which sounds a bit more fluffy, but if, uh, you know, you would hate to start a podcast and even though you'd be good at it, you'd be like, you'd hate doing it all the time. Can I leave then? <laughs> huh? is, that, is that right no you're good at podcasting no, normally I'm, only joking. I'm just i'm just a deer in the headlights <laughs> so, so yeah i think there's three key things you need to focus on so so in summary try try a new platform and focus on those three key things to decide what you're gonna gonna try and test yes. the next one this is probably the one that's most relatable to most of our clients we work with in a variety of different industries and stuff is increasing awareness and filling up that marketing funnel. Mm. So um, we work with a lot of really successful businesses that have been going for years and they do loads of things really, really well. They're profitable, great. Mm. But a really common thing that seems to be the case with a lot of the businesses is they're not very good at getting the initial awareness with their marketing. So mm. they tend to be really good at the conversion side because a lot of marketers and salespeople and people making decisions in business, they're always asking questions about sales mm. and conversion and that sort of thing. So normally that side of things has been covered. It's like, oh yeah, our, our conversion rates are really high. We've been working on this and been working on our pitches or been mm. working on our landing pages, whatever your, your business mm. might do. Um, and that could be really, really great. But something uh, that tends to be missing is the awareness so mm. we found with a lot of businesses we work with and it, it may be about the kind of life cycle on when they tend to get in touch with a marketing agency but they've got this massive potential and like there's one little tweak of just mm. increasing the focus on producing awareness content for social media or increasing activity awareness activity in the marketing funnel and once we do that and start investing that time and resource Suddenly we've got, say, 10 times the amount of people hearing about that business mm. or that brand mm. for the first time. And without improving anything else, yeah, that just means you've got 10 times the amount of people 
traveling through your marketing mm-hmm. funnel. So going through that process of being aware of your business, considering if it's right for them, if they might want to purchase something for your business and then converting to be a customer. And I think a lot of the time people, like clients are amazed that there's nothing else that needs to happen. But it is usually that, in my experience, that awareness stage Mm. that businesses most often miss. Because I think it's a bit more fluffy. Mm. Because when you just talk about reaching more people Mm. rather than this much income, converting sales, that kind of thing, I think sometimes people can't kind of, they can't see the pounds coming into the bank, yeah. so they don't put as much focus on it. But it can have such a huge effect relatively quickly to, to loads of businesses. You're exactly right. And I think, um, is it Gary V that says, this is, I'm going to murder this, but it's like uh, finding undervalued attention. Or he goes yeah. about, where are the places where you can find undervalued attention? And I think that's what, for me, this is all about. Like, where where right now can you create content or can you make a noise and you're going to reach the most amount of people your ideal customers in the most cost effective way focus on those places for example like just to give you some examples right now for us things like linkedin thought leader ads are where we see huge amounts of undervalued attention we can very cost effectively build huge awareness for our business uh using linkedin thought leader ads where we're distributing content from my sort of personal brand to, to the right people. Another example, just thinking of um, like the, the, the Sunny D relaunch campaign we worked on last year where we worked with Sean Williamson. I think we were really clever with that because we worked with uh, someone who, uh, he had like a viral meme. So lots of people were thinking about him at the time. Mm. Um, and there's various uh, audiences that already know about him that we could tap into and that kind of thing. So thinking about little strategies and tactics of like, getting more attention in a cost-effective way. And this has huge potential for businesses or brands that are having any kind of success with organic social content at the moment. Because if you're having relative success with organic social content, and by that I just mean, you know, some people that are interested in engaging with your content, Mm -hmm. a level of success organically, um, to increase the amount of awareness, awareness you're getting, eyes on those posts, you can do two things. You can invest lots of time and resource in creating more posts Mm. or you can increase the amount of people that see them using paid advertising Mm. on social um and with increasing more content there's limits to that how much time do you have within your team how much resource do you have within your team Mm. so say let's go on a smaller scale the smaller end you've got a thousand pounds a month you're thinking i could invest this more into marketing Mm. you could get someone part-time or freelance to create some content and increase how often you're posting quality content slightly Mm. or if you had a thousand pounds you could probably multiply the amount of people you're reaching by 10 with Mm. those posts Mm. so it unlocks this huge potential of reaching more people with things that you already in messaging Mm. and content that you already know is successful and for a lot of businesses this is a no-brainer once which is why it's in this podcast and one of those things Mm. the the small changes that can have a massive impact and an example of this we talked about this a lot because mm. obviously it's one of our best pieces of work mm. the we work with a health and safety brand they had a great product a great business uh, they had some levels of success selling that product and then they paid us to create some content and just reach about a hundred times the amount of people mm. that <laughs> they'd ever reached before and out of that marketing funnel from reaching that amount of decision makers that were relevant, we converted a million pound lead for them. Um, and that was just not, that wasn't changing any of their sales processes. That wasn't changing the product. That wasn't changing the website. That was just changing the amount of eyes on the messaging they had at the beginning of the funnel, mm-hmm. that awareness. Obviously we did some other good bits of remarketing and things, yeah. but that was the main change we reached hundreds of thousands of people that they wouldn't have reached yeah we, we literally i i recently pitched a brand i'm not gonna say what brand it was but i remember looking at a lot of their content they put huge budget like it's a well-known brand huge budget into producing this beautiful content um that we were looking at like that is really cool that content is cool but it just hadn't landed on the platforms they were distributing it on um there's a few tweaks they could have made to make it more native to the platform but we were saying like if they just put some spend behind this to get that in front of the right people, like that would be way more effective than mm. trying to come up with these all these crazy new strategies and approaches. I think there, is, there sometimes is a mismatch. I think so, sometimes people just don't have the experience or the resource within their team maybe to 
deliver paid advertising on social. Mm. But I, I often see this mismatch where maybe they've outsourced to like a, a great video production agency and they've created all this great content. But like you said, they're just not reaching. They haven't got the audience at the moment. Mm. to re And you think it's a weird kind of thing to see all that effort and resource, money and time yeah. put into the content when actually it could be relatively low investment in paid social ads to just reach yeah. a lot more people with that to make sure you're getting the results you want. So in summary, find where the undervalued attention is and utilize channels like paid social ads to get in front of more of the right people with the content you've already got that performs well organically. Sounds so simple, but reach more people in the awareness stage. So if you can multiply that, you're gonna multiply more people coming out the bottom as paying customers. Good advice, Lloyd. Thank you. That's Do a you good profit multiplier. Yes, Pr pretty cool profit <laughs> multiplier. <laughs> Do you want another profit multiplier? Yeah, go on. Give us another profit. What can anchors do to this multiply is, their profits? I like this one. So this, I think, is good for... If you're a data nerd, listen up. If you're not, please keep continuing to listen. <laughs> yeah. um, and also, if you are... We've spoken about paid social ads there. If, if your business or brand is currently running social ads, this will be more relevant to you as well. So this is using data to achieve better results month on month. So... Um, one change we've made for our business and other businesses that we work with, we used to work a lot on a project basis. So perhaps we'd create a load of content. We did this for Knowlton as well as for a lot of our clients. Create a load of content, be like, this is going to be great. Okay, put all the content out there, run ads on it. This is going to be great. And a lot of the times, got great results. But something that shifted recently with more of our work that we're doing and we're seeing real success with is working a different way, changing our processes and how we work over time to allow time between content production to analyze the data of what's working mm. and what isn't and use that to inform future content mm. creation. And that really is quite a simple process when you say it like that. It's just looking at the mm. data you get from your marketing, use that to do create more of what works mm. and less of what doesn't. But because of the way a lot of businesses work, it just doesn't happen effectively at all. Yeah. So I won't spend as long on this one, but to go straight into an example of one of our clients, um, like I said, we work with them on, on a project. We actually work with them on two projects, big video production, loads of resource went into it. We actually created some great stuff, really proud of it for a design agency and uh, got lots of customers. But relatively quickly, those that work in paid ads will know this, within like a couple of weeks, they kind of found a load of the stuff we created that were lower performers, mm. a load of ads we created that were higher performers, and then they're obviously investing in those high performers and the low performing ads, you know, we don't use those anymore. So within a couple of weeks, we've already learned that, but there's nothing they can really do now because they've created all the mm. content, that's what they're using. Whereas we've now shifted with them to a model that, that works really well for them and well for us we create content every single month for them and we have a process where they communicate the exact sort of content and ads that are working each month and we create more of what's working less of what isn't so there's a constant flow of new content coming mm. into that though the the system they've got in the paid ads and we can um, improve results every single week and every single month rather than what a lot of businesses are doing of investing in a huge mm. project for paid social and then realizing some of it doesn't work and kind of like, oh, well, we've done that now. Yeah. Okay. Can I give you an example of how we've applied this exact point that you're talking about in yes. our business? Please do. So recently, um, if you connect with me on LinkedIn or see some of my content, earlier in the year, I did a post basically breaking down uh, the Surreal campaign. Surreal did a campaign where it was like a bad graphic design campaign, an out-of-home campaign where they used word art and comic sans and made it look really terrible and i basically did a post breaking down why i thought it was brilliant and it was formatted in a certain way if you just look at my linkedin you'll see it exactly posted that and it generated uh, almost three hundred thousand impressions organically from that post and mm. we our marketing team and i were like wow this is brilliant let's try and emulate that so we we looked at that data like lloyd's saying and we thought, how can we emulate that? So we started to look at other great marketing campaigns and breaking them down using the same copy format. We did one for Lidl uh, that's generated over 300,000 organic 
LinkedIn impressions now. We've done it for a McVitie's campaign. We've done it for a whole range of campaigns. And just because that small piece of data we had that showed that something worked organically, we took that. And now we're creating every week a whole raft of these campaign breakdowns that are similar to your point before, Lloyd, about building awareness, that are building us huge amounts of awareness really mm -hmm. cost-effectively because it's completely organic. So that's something we're literally doing right now based yeah. on data. So that's so even if so that was actually quite a significant improvement from previous results we got with that mm. type of post. So we're continuing to do that and implement it within the business. But I I found a stat. I haven't checked the maths, so it's probably wrong. But it <laughs> sounds good, so I'm going to say so it. So everyone loves a stat on a podcast. Okay. So if you improve something one percent every day, after a year, it will be thirty seven times better than when he started. My brain's now, going there trying to figure it out. I don't think the maths works. <laughs> and I don't think it's accurate. <laughs> but <laughs> what what is true is uh, that maybe that is right. Uh. But the the compounding effect. So with mm. with this strategy we're talking about, you make small improvements consistently, mm. and the compounding effect of that over weeks, months, and years is massive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just thinking ahead. So if you improve things one percent a day, things yeah. will improve. No. <laughs> No, it's, it's more a 37 times thing. I the more, hmm, it's more the point is they improve much more than you would think. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the compounding. Just from a 1% yes, yeah, improvement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. You know, like, <laughs> um, what's his name? Uh, the big investor guy. Dave, Sean. Yeah. Sam. Uh, Warren Buffett. <laughs> okay. The big investor the guy. The big investor guy. <laughs> yeah. So he, he's worth like billions, one of the richest people in yeah. the world. Mm. And it's mainly because he's had good returns on his investment over because he's well old. I think it's over a period of like 80 yes. years. And it's the compounding effect of his, his investments mm. over 80 years. So he's one of the richest people in the world. So uh, we weren't talking about investing. <laughs> but if you improve things small, you get... You know, improve things small? <laughs> <laughs> improve things in a small way over time you get that compounding effect yeah That's times 37 <laughs> finally on this one yeah i think we're saying about using the data to do more of what works less mm. of what isn't it also gives it also gives you the opportunity uh of that 10 percent test that i told you about mm. but like every month so 10 percent of the content you create it allows you to get rid of 10 percent of the low performing content and try something new. Ten percent for trying something mm. new, and then you will find, you know, like the post, the type of post you were just talking yes. about, the type of content. If we didn't have that was a new type of post. That was the ten percent. Try something new. Yeah. Then we could never have found that. Mm. So it's not just optimizing what's working currently. It's in enabling you to introduce new tests all the time. I really like that idea of constantly having a stream of new things to try and test. And people on TikTok and entrepreneurs say like, fail fast. And so mm. that's that's how, that's cool apparently. Yeah. So do that. Yeah. That, well, basically, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you only need one of those think tests to to work, don't you? We've yeah. done loads of tests that have haven't worked. Yeah. Like me recording this pod today. <laughs> yeah. This is a this yeah. is a test that isn't it's working. A test that has failed. But <laughs> yeah, we tested I'm, Lloyd not sleeping for. I'm, <laughs> I'm failing fast. <laughs> so you know it's a good thing. <laughs> um, and Can next next episode will be one percent better. <laughs> so it's fine. 37. Right. I'm going to do my last one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. That's not good podcasting. Uh, <laughs> gonna, there's a really good thing I'm about to say. <laughs> I'm going to do my last one. Do your last <laughs> one, <Lloyd. laughs> My last one. Um, I'll make this quick. Okay. Good. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. Um, it's adding a team of experts without the risk. So as a business owner myself and working uh, with resources that you have in-house, um, I have found it really challenging over the years to balance that resource to make sure you know we've got enough of the skills we need, but people aren't too stretched, but also we don't have too many mm. people with loads of free time, so we're spending a lot on people and skills that we don't need and that kind of thing. And it took me a really long time to learn that outsourcing teams of experts mm. can be a really positive thing. I think there's a stigma around it, though. I think people are like, oh, we don't outsource to anyone. We, we, everyone's internal in our... Well, I think there's a stigma potentially in smaller businesses. But if you think all the biggest businesses in the world, like, yeah, for example, say you're Uber. Hmm. I, I would imagine if there's something new, like uh, when Uber was small and they were like, we need to get loads of PR. I think businesses like that don't just try and work out from their employees can we try and get some PR, come mm. up with some ideas? 
they're like this is important to us they will go to the best people at pr mm. in the world and say right we've got this project for the next support. six months we need your support and they'll get the best people in the world to help them grow their businesses mm. and add those skills smaller businesses i think you're right sometimes there's a stigma of oh you're outsourcing that's that's not very good so i think it's that trust thing of mm. well how do we know it's gonna be good if it's not your business um but we can use an example for our own business you know rather than one of our clients with this one how it's unlocked massive potential so we uh used to have everything in-house and only use our employed mm. team potentially because of that stigma previously and then uh, I can think of multiple things now where when we have the need for for an expert in mm. a certain field, we will hire them from either from mm. a, a business or freelancer and find those people and add those skills. So one example I can think of is like a colorist for uh, videos that we produce. So for higher production videos, for those that aren't in the video world, um, you need someone that's an expert in color to make sure by the time the video is produced and people see it you know when people are like, oh well that looks like it's on should be on like netflix or something mm. rather than something you're just shooting on your phone yeah it's because of these small details mm. of of that kind of thing and having making sure the color grading is on point yeah um also we've uh graphic design mm. we've got graphic design capacity within our business that we use but also we know that there's some projects that require specific skills at a high mm. level and so we work with a partner to make sure that mm. we have the best people working on that. And it's only been the last year or so, really, I think we've utilized this in the best way mm. for our business. We've impressed our clients much more. We've got much better results by allowing our team to focus on what they're best at yeah. and then adding a team of experts for a small period of time and reducing that risk because mm. you're not committed to the wages of those people for the next 10 years. You're just using them when you need that value added to the business. I feel like the stigma around it thinking about it is people think that you're just a middleman oh you want a new video i'm just going to tell this person in another company to make you a video mm. but that's not how it works for bigger projects like you you know for example for us we hire like makeup artists yeah you know we don't need a full-time makeup artist to just work in our office the whole mm. time because we need them for specific projects when we've got mm. bigger products previously we tried to do the makeup in-house you know mm. and potentially when we're working on productions where we don't have the budget for mm. a makeup artist. So you obviously do your best with mm. the skills you have in-house, but we didn't have an employed makeup artist. Yeah. Whereas <laughs> once you take the leap and employ someone who's the best at mm. it, you're like, oh, wow. People that do this e every day are, are actually really, really highly skilled yeah. and add a lot. It gave me an idea, actually. Do you reckon that you, c there's an, you could like outsource a podcast co-host? <laughs> I think you should try. <laughs> I think that's potentially <laughs> a 10% test. <laughs> <should do. laughs> yeah, I might try that. Yeah. Final yeah. example on this one from one of our yeah. clients. We work with a food brand and I was just thinking that this is exactly what they did by hiring us to work with them mm. actually. We were their team of experts and they uh, came to us originally, uh, another agency basically said, oh, I've got this lead. They want a website for £10,000 mm. but it's not enough budget for us. You might be able to help them. And <laughs> basically we managed to persuade them that a website wasn't what they needed we used our expertise to analyze what they needed and they needed marketing support mm. really and we thought social was the best place for them to do that and paid social and by outsourcing to us as experts in our and this is blowing our own trumpet a bit mm -hmm. but experts in our field rather than taking the risk to build a mark whole marketing team internally within a year we achieved amazing results for them. Within a couple of years, we got them stocked in a couple of UK mm. supermarkets and got these amazing results. And I suppose, yeah, I feel like that was an example of one of our clients that yeah. they hired us as their team of experts in that instance. And it's had a massive effect mm. on the business rather than them taking the risk of hiring a whole marketing team. Mm. Um, Cause they thought they wanted one thing. Internally. They thought yeah. they wanted one thing. And then when we went through the process, it was like, what's your goal? that thing you're saying isn't going to help you achieve your goal, this approach through creating content yeah. on other If they tried to manage it internally, they would have done that website. Mm. They, by the way, we're like six or seven years down the line. They still haven't updated their website and they didn't need to. <laughs> yeah. that, that wasn't what was holding No one back. goes to their website. No one goes to their website. And these big supermarkets mm. now can see, you know, we've reached millions and millions of people online and built that brand awareness for that brand yeah. and the supermarkets love that. Can I just finish by sharing my profit multiplier? Please can I share do. one? So can it be much better than mine? Yeah, right. I'm going to bring I'm going to bring this whole episode together now, guys. Okay. Right. If you've made it this far, congrats. 
So, no, no, I'm joking. So, I thought you were saying it for me. No, no, no. <laughs> so, Final Profit Multiplier um, is all about reshaping the format of your pitches to focus on what your potential customers actually care about. So this tip is for anyone who pitches for work, anyone who presents to potential customers, showing them how you can help them. And I've got a massive shout out and a bit of a story now uh, to Carrie Rose from Rise at Seven because she gave us some advice about pitching that has, I'm just gonna say, completely changed our business recently in terms of like how many pitches we're winning. And I wanna share that advice with anchors. She gave us some confidential advice <laughs> and we're going to share it on the podcast. No, it wasn't confidential. It was a tip, but no. it wasn't. I'm only joking. Am I actually allowed to share it, Lloyd? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. I'm joking. Um, so, quick backstory. Last year, we went to an event, a spoken event called Agency Hackers in Ibiza. And out there, we met um, Carrie Rose, who was really lovely. She's another agency founder, founded Rise at Seven. Got an incredible backstory that she shared as part of that session, which was amazing. And after that, um, we were like mesmerized by her backstory and what she's achieved and everything. And uh, and then we, we saw her outside and had a bit of a chat with her. And she was talking about all these brands she worked with. And I, my, my kind of sales hat was on and I was like, I really want to ask her some tips and advice basically. And I asked her, what's the, like your number one tip for winning these pitches? How are you working with Boohoo and all these other big brands, uh, you know, that are really impressive. And she said one thing to me that, really stood out she said when you're pitching the go-to thing that most companies will do or when they're pitching another person is they'll start the like presentation or the pitch by saying this is us we are this company we were founded in this year this is our team me 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 us 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 me 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 and the people you're pitching instantly switch off because they don't care about you like newsflash, people that you're pitching don't care about you. They, they care about achieving their goals. No one cares about Dan as much as he cares about himself. Exactly, yeah. right? Exactly. Thanks, Lloyd. That's right. So, um, so she said, flip it on his head. Rather than going into a pitch and just talking about yourself, don't even do that. Leave that till right at the end if you have to. Start the pitch by teaching the brand or the person you're pitching something. Teach them something that's about value adding. Talk about how they can improve what they're doing as a starting point. Because if you, like, I thought of this, if someone came to us and said, we've looked at what you're doing at Knowlton in this area, here, is, here are five key ways that you can improve that based on evidence. This, this, this. And I'd be like, wow, that's amazing. Like really impressed. Rather than, I'm company X. We were founded this, this year. So we completely changed the way that we pitch by focusing on teaching our customers something, giving them something of value at the start of the presentation, talking about their brand, because you know that's what they care about. How can we help them achieve their goals what cool ideas do we have? Start with that and you almost see their eyes light up. Like I remember Lloyd giving, you gave me some feedback on a pitch a while ago when we were talking about uh, the brand we were pitching, the, the eyes of the brand manager lit up and their face on this Zoom call genuinely was like really interested and you could tell that. And then when we moved on to us, <laughs> you could tell they like switched off and they're like, you know, like looking around, not that interested. So it's just a really... Uh, value adding tip that's completely changed our pitching process and hopefully that helps any of you anchors that yeah. pitch it shows shows your expertise and it shows that you care enough to put the work in before presenting to them that mm. you to, to help them learn something and that kind of shows what you do in future as well i think yeah so. thanks dan that was much better than all of mine no it wasn't no save the best until last so i hope that some of these things are really going to help you anchors like we said these are all things we've learned from us and our clients that we've made small changes and they've had a massive impact. And I think growing business is about doing more and more of that, basically. We don't want to waste resource and things that isn't helping us achieve our goals. So when you make these changes uh, and make loads of money and stuff and grow your business, give us some or get promoted or have success in any way, um, can you send us a message or write us a review and say, I made loads of money or I got promoted because of business anchors that'd be great thank you and, and we'll see you in your ears next, next week, week.
Just before you go, we want to take a second to talk about our podcast sponsors, Adobe Express. Adobe Express enables anyone to quickly and easily create standout social graphics, logos, flyers, banners, and more on the web and mobile. There are so many amazing features and benefits to using Adobe Express. You can choose from thousands of beautifully designed templates to inspire you and get started. You can quickly remove a background, convert JPEG to PNG, videos to GIFs, merge videos, change video speeds and more. Apply your brand to your content in just a tap and collaborate with your colleagues through shared templates and libraries. You'll also get access to the entire diverse royalty-free Adobe Stock photo collection created by the world's best professionals and choose from over 20,000 licensed Adobe fonts, as well as their collection of curved typesets, grids, and exquisite font pairings. You can apply standout photo effects in seconds, discover easy bite-sized tips to get you started on the Learn tab, or connect on one of their creative community spaces to stay close to our team and fellow users. Now that's a lot of features to get your teeth into. Click the link in the description of the episode to give Adobe Express a go today and we'll see you next week.